Good day, MBDM family. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. It is um, Pastor O.C. here once again. I'm just wanting to greet everyone. Hopefully you're having an amazing day, an amazing whatever time of day you're watching this video. And wanting to kind of give a reason why we're doing the video this time. So on Thursday, August the 3rd, we're actually going to not hold Bible study in person. I know as you heard all side and was like, oh, but I like having Bible study. Why do we have this weird schedule? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, um, Pastor Kamika and I just needed a break <laughs> for a moment um, as we prepare and our family to transition back into the school year. But another reason um, is due to us having an amazing time together last week during Vacation Bible School, and also for this week, preparing for those who are going to participate in the 141 garage sale in Granger, Iowa. So unfortunately, we've had to do some weird scheduling, some moving things around for the summer, but don't fret. We're going to kind of start getting back into some form of regular schedule in the month of August, and hopefully by September, we are rocking and rolling. We do have some events that are coming up that may call for us to postpone some some Thursday Bible study here and there, but we'll definitely keep you posted in, regar in regards to which ones they are so that you are able to access material. But what we do believe is that God has given us multiple tools and multiple facets to be able to keep everyone abreast and connected, not just to each other, but also to the Word of God. So what I want to do tonight is I just want to give kind of an a, re, uh, a, a review, if you will, of all the things we've kind of talked about so far in relationship to the Vet and the Voices series, um, emotional intelligence, soul under control. So this will not be a long video. It's just kind of hitting the highlights and just making sure we keep those things fresh. If you are wanting to stay connected and kind of see the full series, you can definitely visit our YouTube page to be able to click on the Bible study series that is entitled Emotional Intelligence, and that will give you the ability to access all the deep cuts and all the information, all the questions that has been asked within the Bible study overall. This is just kind of a in review, kind of a mid term. These are the main elements that we referred to and that we talked about just to kind of keep those things fresh to us. So I can't, I won't be able to do an amazing job as Apostle Stephanie Moody has, but I can definitely let you know some of the insights. So that is the purpose of this video on tonight. So we're going to kind of jump into the PowerPoint and some other things as well. <clears throat> but we always want to start off with what we always start every Bible study off with, which is talking about the scripture for Peter chapter three. Verse 15, I'm going to pull it up in the New King James Version. And we are going to show it. Here we go. All right. Don't know why I'm showing. That's okay. We'll, uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of work here. So you can see this in real time. Oh, actually, I got to do that. There we go. Ah, if I click that button, that makes more sense. All righty. There we go. So 1 Peter 3 and 15, it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Read the Amplified Version. It says um, the main part is always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confidence, assurance, elicited by faith that is within you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. And so with that, we always kind of go back to and want to have a conversation of how are we displaying that God is our father and Jesus is our brother? And those things, as you see them, you can definitely put them in the YouTube comment. You can also comment to this video and ban if you're a part of our band group. But we want to continue to always remember that this life that we live is not just about us. It is about showing people who may not have a full understanding of what it is to live in a kingdom or just be able to serve God in his fullness 
to be able to see what that looks like. And they're doing a way in which it won't repel people, but compel people to want to know more about him, to eventually give their life to him, and to not just look for salvation, but also be able to look for the work to be able to fulfill the very purpose that they have. There's a lot of people who are gifted and do various things, but they still aren't fulfilled because the gift that they're using, which comes without repentance, as well as the calling on their life, comes without repentance. You don't get fulfilled unless you actually put that very thing in use in the environment that is set for. And they need us to be able to show them that there is another way to be able to show them that God is who he said he is and to be able to speak to those various avenues and lanes and to be able to do it in a way in which they can understand it and receive it. Because believe it or not, all of those that are in any type of church, any titles that you read about, they can't reach everybody. It's very interesting when you find those encounters in the word where it wasn't a it wasn't a pastor or an evangelist or a prophet who reached the people. It was someone who was unnamed. It was someone who wasn't even 18 years old that was able to change a nation or change an area or to um, give a word that God wanted the people to hear. Hear. So always keep in mind that your voice matters and that whatever experience God's giving you, look for that understanding and then be willing to share it and to share the hope and the and the gladness that you have just by serving him, whether in the good times or the not so good times. It's being consistent and knowing that he is, you know, in those good times and the development times, he still is. We say he is the same today, yesterday and forevermore. That's the same for any season that we go through. And so always keep that in mind as you're, um, looking and we journey through and we have all these kind of um, conversations about what is before us and the like. But like I said, I want to go ahead and kind of jump into the PowerPoint just as a tool to remind us and keep us kind of focused on the highlights. So as I've already mentioned, um, I've talked about, you know, the question of the day they always go to is definitely one part that we always want to keep in mind. Now, also, I was talking about veterans for the voices. Apostle Stephanie Moody has us looking at emotional intelligence, being able to understand as we are getting our soul under control and allowing for our soul to um, be in the right order and standing with God, that there's a level of emotional intelligence that we are to not just know about, but we have to operate under to be able to display the things of God and be able to operate in those various things. Now, emotional intelligence as a definition, just as a reminder, it is the ability to understand, to manage, and use one's own emotions, and to recognize, interpret, and influence the emotions of others. And we really focus on interpret, because we can have the emotions, but being able to interpret them and being able to acknowledge them and be able to express them is really the part that's going to be very critical as we continue to break down our emotional intelligence and even raise it to be able to function at a higher level of emotional intelligence. Now, as we talked about emotional intelligence, we highlighted that there are five keys um, elements of our emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Now, at this point, we've only kind of tackled two of these which is why we're doing kind of an end time review to kind of make sure we keep those at fresh. And as I mentioned earlier, you can always go back to our playlist to be able to access some of the other PowerPoints and other uh, videos and teachings about emotional intelligence. But just to kind of make sure we're good when we talk about um, vetting was something that we refer to because we have to be able to vet the voices, which is always kind of the undercurrent. But especially when we talk about emotional intelligence, we have to be able to vet out those very things that will try to either show themselves as being emotional intelligent levels or even be able to vet those very things that will um, attempt to um, trick us and not allow for us to understand and try to cause for us to not comprehend. So we've talked about the definition of vetting. But as I said, we've kind of began to tackle two of the five emotional intelligence. One is self-awareness. 
the definition being the ability to focus on yourself and how your actions, thoughts, or emotions do or don't align with your internal standards. So with self-awareness, it was really trying to examine, first of all, it's ourselves. It's focusing on ourselves. What, what are we? Because that's where self comes in. And being able to focus on ourselves and how the actions and thought emotions that we have or don't align to those turn standards. So we really talked about with self-awareness of what is the standard that we're trying to measure those emotions by so that we're able to rightly understand the actions that we take, the thoughts that we have and the emotion that we exhibit. We have to remember everything starts from a thought, which then attach itself to an emotion, which then try to play themselves out with some type of action, which dictates our destiny. And so with self-awareness is understanding, for example, what are the thoughts that are running freely through our mind? How are we letting those things run through our mind? Is there an emotion that is always attached to a certain thought to be able to examine them and re-examine them so that we're able to find the root cause of them so that we are able to address them at the beginning? We have to remember that we are charged to take every thought captive into the obedience of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're the one in charge of doing that. If we're saying we want to do it, then we have to do the work. But we have to be self-aware of those actions that we take, of the thoughts and the emotions. When we talk about self-regulation, when we can, um, as far as a definition, it is the control of oneself by oneself. So when we talk about self-regulation, we went through the high emotional intelligence, what that looks like, well, the low emotional intelligence. And it's really good when we have a, a document like this to be able to talk about and examine when we've been through things, where we're at and being honest with ourselves. Because if we're not willing to be honest with ourselves at this moment, then we're not going to be honest with ourselves then we can't be truly able to evaluate where we're at. And with self-regulation, it's really talking about being able to control those temptations to control our sexual desires, which is one lesson we really got deep into. But even controlling our, uh, our sexual desires and controlling our hunger and our, our thirst for things, it's being able to self-regulate those very things to be able to be able to identify um, what we're doing and be able to regulate, control, to do those by oneself. Now, let's kind of address this as well. We are in charge to ensure that we are managing ourselves and we're self-regulating ourselves, but we have God on our side to help us with that deciphering. We're charged to do it, but we also have access to call for support and for help and assistance. Because what we, one thing we have to make sure we understand and analyze and we really kind of started down this road as well as trying to figure out what causes us to lose control. If we're going to talk about emotional intelligence, we have to be able to also identify those moments in which we've lost control and what was the cause of it. See, just saying we lost control in something is not enough now. We have to be able to speak to what caused us to lose control. What did we allow to cause for us to lose control. What was the trigger? What was the emotion? What was the act? What was the environment? What did we watch? What did we eat? What did we say? What did we not catch on to that we allowed to cause for us to lose control and to act out of character that is representative of the most high God. What is it that was allowed to stay unaddressed to the point where we got out of character? What was the very thing? What was the person that embodied the very thing that caused a triggering thought that we did not capture? The Bible never said that temptation will not be available and around us. The thing about what temptation is, do we fall for it? This is where Apostle always tells us that Satan knows how we like our taco. He also knows what type of taco that you like. And the thing about it is, he knows it, but then we act like we don't know it. 
that it's the triggering factor. I tell everyone multiple times, you ain't going to get me with chocolate. I don't like chocolate. I don't deal with chocolate. It's there. It's whatever. But a purple bag of Skittles, wild berry is the flavor. That sucker is gone in 2.5 seconds. Now, I know for others it's reversed because they're like, I don't like Starburst and Fruity Candy. But the caramel M&Ms or the um, Reese's Buttercups, you know who you are. That's the thing that triggered and caused for you to act out of character because you're trying to get the fix of the peanut butter Reese's cup. Knowing that your A1C is way too high. Knowing that you need to go ahead and fill up that 64 ounce water bottle and drink that to make sure your body is regulated and it has what it needs to function. So this is just a reminder of some of the elements, as I mentioned, that we referred to. And I'm going to stop here because, like I said, I wanted to be a quick reminder. You're going to see throughout this week that you're going to see the series kind of be played back out in YouTube. Definitely hop on and watch the video. Drop any questions you have in the chat. Um, if you see it in band, drop your questions in band because um, I am pretty sure that Apostle will pick this up um, in due time and be able to complete the conversation about emotional intelligence because we understand this is not just something that we're doing as a summer series this is the evolution of the growth that god has taken us through and so this is something that is engrafted into all the teaching when we talk about having a soul under control so it's going to take us a while to get through and that's okay because god does not want us to do something just quick fast in a hurry we are needing to plant roots into our spiritual souls at this time so that when the season change, we don't change. We stay consistent in the path that God has us to go. And the very things that we have already planted will not be withered away or will not be washed away. The root will be thickened enough and taken hold enough so that it will not be moved by the things that will, that will come. No, as I didn't say that may come, I said that will come. Because as we know, nothing is valid unless it is tested. And we cannot have a testimony without a test being completed. So I'm going to stop here. I love you all. Hopefully this was a good enough kind of in review to kind of hit the high notes. But definitely continue to go through your notes, continue to go through the videos. And we will definitely communicate when we will meet back in the house in person on Thursday for another Bible study. Once again, we are not going to meet this Thursday, which is August the 3rd for Bible study, so that those who are going to serve at the 141 Garage Sale in Granger, Iowa, said, we love you all. We appreciate you all. Have a wonderful and great evening. We will see you soon. Oh, by the way, remember, you are born on purpose, for a purpose, and with purpose. Bye!